So Pete, you run Mashable, it's probably one of the most successful uh, sites on the web covering technology news. Mm -hmm. um, how did that start? So I started Mashable when I was 19. I was living in uh, Bankery, Scotland, a little town. I haven't been there. No, not many people <laughs> have, but it's a nice little town. Okay. Maybe we should go. About 6,000 people when I was living there. Um, but I wanted to get into technology, you know. So I was 19. I just come out of high school, right? And I was passionate. And you weren't going to university. You were going to go. Well, you know, so I'd had, um, you know, I'd had kind of like a kind of a troubled school a little right, bit. I right. was sick a lot. Right. Um, so I had like low attendance. Right. I wanted to get into it, but I wasn't really, you know, I was kind of a little bit rebellious as well, right, which right. might have been part of it. And but I that helps feel, as being an entrepreneur, right? Being a little bit of a rebel. It, uh, that's probably a key part of it. Right. You want to. You know, I wanted to do what I was passionate about, and if people said, you know, be passionate about this, I couldn't really motivate myself, you know, to do my individual subjects, but I was really passionate about writing and technology. Uh -huh. So I started doing my own thing on the side pretty early, probably in my early teens, I started, uh, you know, pretending to be a grown up from writing for like US <laughs> magazines. So I'd submit, they do a lot of freelance was that submissions. You? I could have been, it could have okay. been under my pen name, um, but I did a lot of freelancing right. for American ones, trying to get my writing skills right. up, trying to figure out what they're looking right. for, uh, and then I also started doing some entrepreneurial stuff. So then I got kind of more grandiose ambitions, and I thought, well... And you, you were know, still, at this point, 17 like, or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. probably about 16, 17. Right. Um, but, you know, by the time I'd reached about, like, just turned uh, maybe 19, mm -hmm. I started to think, well, how do I, uh, you know... I'm not going to go to university. How do I build something that actually makes a difference in the world? I was trying to understand technology. I was really passionate about it. I figured maybe other people wanted right. to learn about the stuff. I didn't live in Silicon Valley. I didn't really understand exactly how Yeah, you're a bit, a bit of an outsider work. being in Scotland, but, no? But I kind of turned that to my advantage right. to some extent because I wrote about things. Uh, it wasn't so much about, you know, this person's moved from this company to this you company, sure? but was, here's this new website. Here's why it matters to you. Consumer here's the things that it does. Yes. It's all about utility. It's right. all about thinking about the reader first and what are they going to get out of this? So uh, that was incredibly valuable and it was, it was kind of the start of the social networking trend. Right. So I was really and this is Oh, this is 2005. 2005. So you were right at the right time at the right moment as well. Yeah, but it was just something I was really passionate right. about. Right. So I started covering social networks and, and yep. started getting a lot of traction there. Uh, and obviously people were passionate about what, uh, what Mashable was doing, so mm -hmm. we got a community going, and right. I'd get these tips sent in, and people would, uh, would say, hey, I have this great new site that you should cover. I uh, got a lot of momentum very quickly, and then I signed up my first advertiser. Probably, probably took a while, probably took like six months or so. Were you the sales, you were the salesman and was, the writer I was and the... eight to 10 posts a day, uh, right. plus if you can find you know, an hour at night. I, would, I mean, I worked probably 18 hour days, and this wow. was on, the, the biggest problem I had wasn't the length of the day, but it was the time zone. So I was trying to compete with the sure. West Coast right. of, of America. Right. Right. And in Britain, you would have to go to bed at like 8 a.m. because that's their midnight right. in San right. Francisco. So I got these kind of skewed hours. And that, was my, <laughs> that was my least favorite part of the job, was right. sleeping during the day and trying to wake up and work throughout the night. Now, how many um, people are at Mashables now? Uh, about 60. 60, okay. Are they yeah. all, where are you based here in the U.S. now? Uh, our main office is in New York. Okay. We have a, a smaller office in San Francisco. Oh, right. And, uh, but yeah, the, the story from there to here is very much just an ongoing process of, hey, you know, where do we need to add more people to get to the next level? So and we only have, unfortunately, a minute or two left here. Okay. And I have three questions I want to ask let's you. Let's do it. And Mashables, strange name. What is it? What, what, where did it come so from? So Mashable comes from the mashups trend. That right, really mashups, yeah, uh, sure. Which people were actually in the web, but not the music scene. Right. Uh, people were combining two different websites. Yes. So people would take Google Maps and Flickr and gotcha. put them together and map all your photos on Flickr. Still happening now, but we right. call it app stores and, right, right. and APIs. Right, and sure. It's all about building on a platform. The next question is success. Um, when you think of the word success, uh, what does that mean for you? I mean, personally, not for Mashables, right. but what, what, what do you, how would, how do you, who do you compare yourself to or where do you want to be? Um, well, I think success is a process and it's a journey, right? And I don't think you ever get there. Mm -hmm. You always see the next thing that you're excited about making better. Last question, um, a subject probably near to your heart and near to my heart. Has the internet changed writing in a sentence or two or less? How has it changed right. in a sentence or two or less? Well, I think you have to do that because that's, that's the way the internet, internet works. Right, that's right. You want it in 140 characters well, 120 because I want to say at Pete Cashmore. Okay, okay. <laughs> and you want to get the retweets. Yeah, 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 of course. Um, how is it? Is, is, that, is that how it's done? Is it brevity? Is it less reporting? Is it more immediacy? There's, more, there's a lot more first person for certain. I think the fundamental change that all this technology has brought about 
is a rapid increase in volume, okay? Because it used to be that only selected people, if you had a printing press, right. you could publish. Right. Now everyone can publish. Now there's some, there's some value in everything that's being published, even if it might seem irrelevant. You know, what you, um, you know, what you have for breakfast today might seem completely irrelevant. But if you're a statistician trying to figure out, you know, what are the meals being eaten across America, it's actually incredibly useful. So the trick is curation. It's to say, well, this piece of information is really, really important, and the role of the editor, the role of the writer is to find the stuff, the gems, because people don't have any time anymore. Right. So right. there's a rapid increase in volume, but the role of the editor still remains, which is to find the best stuff, to make sense of it, to know the audience, and to pick the stuff they're going to want to read.